Mg is the chemical symbol for which element? Manganese, mercury, magnesium, or molybdenum? The correct answer is magnesium. Number two, how many bonds does carbon form with other elements? One, four, or it depends. It's gonna be four. It's either gonna be four singles, two doubles, a triple and a single, or a double and two singles. Number three, E final is greater than E initial. So does that mean that the delta E is positive, zero, or negative? Well, it's gonna be positive because delta E equals E final minus E initial. So if, for example, we have 10 joules and one joule, it's gonna be greater than zero. What is this? It's a wavelength, the horizontal distance associated with one repetition of the wave. Rank each of these bonds by strength. The correct answer is B. The single is the weakest, then the double, then the triple is the strongest. Circle the odd term out. Number of protons, number of electrons, four or atomic number. Correct answer is number of electrons because all three of these other choices are the exact same thing for beryllium. How many valence electrons does this atom have? None, two, three, or 13 valence electrons. So the answer is gonna be three because it's all the electrons in the outermost shell. Elements of the same group have the same number of shells or valence electrons. The correct answer is valence electrons as the group number equals the number of valence electrons. So group three elements have three valence electrons each. Carbon's average atomic mass is what of these? So it's gonna be 12.011 AMUs per atom of carbon. So the average mass of a single atom of carbon is 12.011, that's what this number means. Which of these describes electronegativity? Like what's the definition of electronegativity? The atom's tendency to attract electrons within a covalent bond, which has two shells and three valence electrons. So it's gonna be boron because it's in row two, period two, and it's in group three. How many neutrons does this isotope of neon have? 10, 11, 16, or 21? The correct answer is B, 11 neutrons, because this number right here is protons plus neutrons, whereas this number is protons. So we just take the difference and we get 11. Chemical reactions express the conservation of atoms, mass, energy, or all of them. Well, it's actually gonna be all of them because yes, the atoms are conserved, but also the energy is conserved and the mass is conserved. Which of these four elements has the largest atomic radius? Well, it's gonna be in the bottom left corner. What determines the strength of an attractive bond? Well, the correct answer is distance. If it's really short, it's gonna be a strong bond. If it's really long, it's gonna be a weak bond. Which of these is the correct formal charge equation? It's gonna be group number minus number of dots minus number of sticks. For example, oxygen is in group six. It's got four dots, it's got two sticks. Six minus four minus two is zero. What's the difference in electronegativity of this bond? Francium fluorine. Well, very simply, it's just gonna be 4.0 minus 0.7, which would be 3.3. How many hydrogens does this line bond diagram have? Well, each of the ends and the bends are carbon, and each carbon needs four bonds, so we're gonna fill in the rest with hydrogen, so it's gonna have 10 hydrogens. Which of these is least likely to form an ionic bond? The correct answer is carbon, largely because it's in group four. Which of these two waves has a larger wavelength, A or B? So it's gonna be A, because the horizontal distance it takes for it to repeat itself is far longer than for this wave. These waves interfere constructively, destructively, or parallelly. So it's constructively because it's peak to peak, trough to trough, they line up. The most common isotope of beryllium has what? So the correct answer is nine atomic mass units. First of all, we have to have either nine or nine be the answer because we have to have a whole number. And atomic mass units is what is being measured with this number right here. Which electron has the most energy and which one has the least energy? Well, the closer it is to the nucleus, the lower the energy, but even though this electron is closest to the nucleus, it's not occupying a shell, so it's not actually part of the atom. So two has the least energy and three has the most. Circle the odd term out. Period, cycle, wavelength. Well, the correct answer is cycle because it's the broad term to describe a wave repeating itself. For wavelength, it's in dimensions of distance. For period, it's in dimensions of time. What's the chemical symbol for potassium? P, P, O, P, T, or K? It's actually K because we use the Latin name. Which concept is being illustrated in this diagram? Atomic radius, bore, or shielding? The correct answer is shielding. If wavelength increases, then what increases or decreases? So it's gonna be energy decreases because when we use the equation that marries the wave and particle models of lights, we see that wavelength and energy are inversely proportional. What type of compound is BeBr2? Ionic, molecular, metallic, or covalent? 
Well, it's going to be ionic because it's composed of a metal and a non-metal. The energy of this electron does what? Does it increase, decrease, or is there not enough information? Well, it increases because it gets further away from the nucleus, occupying a higher energy shell. How many electrons does this isotope of neon have? 9, 10, 11, or none of these? 9, because if it has a positive one charge and there's 10 protons, it's got to have one less electron. Circle the odd one out. Propagation speed, time of propagation, distance traveled. So propagation speed is the correct answer because it's the constant, whereas the other two are variables. They could be different. What's the molecular formula of this compound right here, this molecule right here? So all the ends and bends are carbons, and they each need four bonds. Anything that's not carbon-carbon bond is a bond with hydrogen. So it's C5H12. The most common isotope of hydrogen has how many neutrons? So it's going to be zero neutrons because the most common isotope of hydrogen has exactly one AMU, and that AMU is from the proton. So there's no neutrons left over. Which wave travels faster, this wave or this wave? Well, that's a trick question because regardless of the wavelength, all light travels the same in a vacuum. 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Which corner of the periodic table is atomic radius the smallest? So it's going to be in the top right corner because that's just how the periodicity works. The force between a proton and electron is positive or negative, attractive or repulsive. So it's going to be negative and attractive. Shielding leads to atomic radius doing what? So it's going to increase down a group. That's because we're adding shells of electrons. So there's more repulsion of the outermost electron to gain access to the nucleus. Coulomb's law shows distance and force are what relationship? So the correct answer is going to be inversely related, because when one term increases, the other term decreases. Rank atomic radius by periodic table region. The correct answer is that top right is the smallest, bottom right is the second biggest, top right is the second smallest. If an atom loses these electrons, how many valence electrons remain? It may seem like it would be zero, but it's got to be eight because if a shell has no electrons, it just doesn't exist. So we have eight valence electrons. Rank the energies of each of the electrons. So this is a trick question because there's not going to be an electron right here because it's not occupying a shell. So Z is going to have less energy than X. How many hydrogens are in one unit of this chemical reaction? So what we see right here is one unit of a chemical reaction, and there's four hydrogens present. It's not eight, because these four hydrogens, the same four hydrogens over here that just happen to react and rearrange. Rank elements by atomic radius, all four of these. Blue is the smallest, then green, then red. What's the molecular formula of this molecule right here? So it's going to be C4H8, because the ends and bends are carbons, and every non-carbon carbon bond is a carbon with a hydrogen, such that every carbon has four bonds. Circle the odd term out. Shielding, atomic radius, and electronegativity. So the correct answer is shielding, because atomic radius and electronegativity are the effect of shielding. The FRF bond has what type of character? So the correct answer is low covalent character, and which is also high ionic character, and the other two options are the exact same thing. Which atom has the highest electronegativity? First of all, we got to see what elements are actually within this molecule, and it's very clear that oxygen has the highest electronegativity of all the elements present. Compared to other electrons, valence electrons form what connection with the nucleus? It's going to be the weakest attraction with the nucleus. Atomic radius increases across a period right to left because of what? It's effective nuclear charge. Forming a bond requires energy or releases energy. It may be a little bit counterintuitive, but it actually releases energy. We start with high energy and we go to low energy, or at least lower energy. Which of these equations doesn't belong? The correct answer is this equation right here because it's the only one of these that deals with wave, whereas the other three deal with particles. The diagonal effect is present between what set of atoms? What set of elements? So it's going to be green and pink because they're very close to each other and they're very equal in atomic radius, electronegativity, ionization energy, etc. Is there a diagonal effect present between these elements right here? The answer is no because there's at least a two-shell difference and so because with significantly more shielding, they're not going to have significantly similar periodic trend properties. Is there a diagonal effect between Mg and Br? The answer is no because there's a huge effective nuclear charge difference. So they're not going to be similar in atomic radius or electronegativity, etc. The stronger the chemical bond is, the what the bond energy is. It's actually the more negative the bond energy is. And this might sound counterintuitive at first, but it's actually very 
very simple. There is a larger deficit relative to zero. We have to add the exact amount of energy but positive to break that bond. We add in however much energy gets us to zero joules and the bond is broken. The infinity shell has how much energy? Infinite, zero, or no energy value associated with it? The correct answer is zero. An electron has no energy when occupying an infinity shell. Circle the odd one out. So the correct answer is actually low covalent character because this bond right here is perfectly covalent, which is also very low in ionic character. So it's got very low covalent character. Bond polarity is directly related to what? The correct answer is electronegativity difference because it takes two atoms of varying electronegativities to shift the electron density one way or the other. Which two atoms have electronegativity values of 3.0? The correct answer is chlorine and nitrogen. Fundamentally, you just gotta memorize this. Circle the odd one out. Electronegativity. All of the other terms are simply different ways of illustrating the exact same thing. What is the chemical symbol for mercury? MC, MR, ME, or HG? It's gonna be HG. 9.012 represents beryllium's mass number, neutron count, average atomic mass, molecular weight. So it's not going to be the first two because these need to be whole numbers. It's going to be the average atomic mass because of any particular atom. This is going to be the average value in AMU. And it's not the molecular weight because it's not a molecule. What is the difference between this and this? What are they different in? Charge, molar mass, atomic number, proton number. So the correct answer is B, molar mass, because they have different mass numbers. They have the same atomic number and thus proton number, and the charge is not indicated, so it's gotta be zero for each. What is oxygen's formal charge in this molecule? So it's gonna be zero, because we calculate formal charge with group number, minus the number of dots, minus the number of sticks, and we get zero. What is the charge of gallium if it has 33 electrons? Well, it has 31 protons, and so if it's got 33 electrons, it's got to have a negative two net charge. Cyanide has a molecular formula of what? It's going to be Cn minus. What's the name of this ion, PO43 negative? It's going to be phosphate. And this is something you must memorize because it's going to show up a lot. MgX2, what is X? What is this mystery element? So the correct answer is fluorine because it's got to have a negative one charge because there's two of them to counteract a positive two charge. And fluorine is the only one of these four that is in group seven that just needs one electron to form an octet. The most common isotope of beryllium has how many neutrons? The correct answer is five neutrons because nine is the mass number. And so if there's four protons, there's got to be five neutrons. How many subatomic particles are total for this isotope? So it's got seven protons and mass number is 14, seven plus seven. So seven is the number of neutrons. And if it's got a negative three charge, it's got to have three more electrons than protons. Add all three of these together and the total number of a subatomic particles is 24. Fish bass is formed by what pair of ions? So it's actually going to be Ba2 plus and S2 minus. What is Mn's oxidation state? So the correct answer is positive seven because oxygen is negative two and there's four of them. So it contributes negative eight. The overall charge is negative one. So in order to balance out the equation, we got to have positive seven for Mn. Which of these graph most likely depicts E versus F? Well, it's going to be A, because E and F are directly proportional. When one increases, the other increases. As C increases, what happens to energy of the photon? So it's actually none of these because C is a constant. The speed of light is always the speed of light. Circle the odd one out. So it's going to be B, because it's the only one of these four that depicts destructive interference, whereas the others all depict constructive interference. Which graph depicts energy shell distribution? So the correct answer is B. It increases its discrete dots, and the increase gets smaller and smaller as we get n greater. If the change in energy of the electron is greater than zero, then what happens? It's actually all of the above. n increases, energy is absorbed, and photon is absorbed. Which of these equations illustrates the law of conservation of energy? So the correct answer is the absolute value of the change in energy in n is equal to the energy of the photon. Electron energy blank when it diverges from the nucleus, as n gets further their way from the nucleus. The correct answer is A, electron energy increases. Shell energy values must be what? Using this equation right here. Well, it's got to be negative because if R is a positive, negative of a positive is a negative divided by a positive. So negative divided by positive is a negative. And none of these other three options are correct if you were to look at this equation. Which energy gap is the largest? The gap between shell one and two, between two and three, between three and four, or 99 and 100? So the correct answer is between one and two because the energy increase gets smaller and smaller as we get further and further as n increases and goes to infinity. Is this molecule polar?
So it does have a polar region, but it's overwhelmingly nonpolar. So overall, it's nonpolar. How many hydrogens does this molecule have right here? Well, it's a pentavalent carbon right here where it has five attachments and that cannot happen. It would be way too unstable. So this molecule doesn't even exist. So the correct answer is none of these. Which of these has more atoms? This molecule or this molecule? It's a little counterintuitive, but it's actually the one on the left because the ends and the bends are carbons and they must have four bonds. This carbon only has one carbon bond, so it has to have three extra hydrogens. Rank the number of subatomic particles for this isotope of molybdenum. So the correct answer is B. There's gonna be 42 protons, and then there's gonna be 50 neutrons because it's the difference. And then it's gotta have two more protons than electrons. So you compare them and there's the most neutrons and there's the least electrons. How many lone pair electrons are in this molecule? So using your knowledge of formal charge, you can rearrange the equation to solve for the number of dots, and you get that there's a total of 16 dots, eight pairs of lone electrons. Which molecule has a larger mass? So it's gonna be A. If you draw the Lewis structure from this, you get CH3, you get C3H6, you have C3H4, because this has the same number of carbons, but more hydrogens, overall A is going to be larger. This diagram represents what isotope of helium? It actually is none of them because helium doesn't have three protons, it has two protons. So this doesn't even make any sense. How many lone pair electrons does this molecule have right here? Again, rearranging the formal charge equation to solve for number of dots, we get a total of 10 lone pair electrons or five pairs. This distance right here is blank in comparison to wavelength. Well, it's gonna be less than that because wavelength is the horizontal distance it takes for a wave to repeat itself, and it's less than that. Compare the wavelengths of each of these waves. So wavelength A is going to be 2.5 times as great as wavelength B because a single wavelength A can fit 2.5 wavelengths of B. Rank each of these highlighted atoms by charge. So the correct answer is that two is the most negative because it's the most electronegative and it's surrounded by things that are electropositive. Four is going to be neutral, so it's going to be in the middle. And then one, this hydrogen number one, is going to be more electropositive than carbon because of the greater electronegativity difference with oxygen. What's the period of this wave if this horizontal distance is 15 seconds? Well, if we superimpose them together, we see that our T is two thirds of this 15 seconds, so it's got to be 10 seconds. Which of these is C4H10O? So this is all about process of elimination. This can't be right because it doesn't exist. It's got a pentavalent carbon. This has one too many carbons, and this has a negative charge. So A is gonna be the correct answer. A mass of one mole of protons is equal to what? The correct answer is one gram, because one AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So if we multiply each side by a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, we get that one mole of AMU equals exactly one gram. The most common isotope of sodium achieved in octet. What is E plus P plus N? Well, the mass number, which is P plus N, is 23. And if it achieved in octet, then the, it must have a positive one charge because it's in group one. So it's got to have one more electron than proton. So the correct answer is 10 plus 23, so it's 33. Rank these bonds by their covalent character. So a CC bond is going to have the highest covalent character because it's an electronegativity difference of zero, whereas FFR is the largest electronegativity difference, and then it just ranks in order. What is the length of B if this length right here is 600 nanometers? So 600 nanometers is twice the wavelength. So we know that the wavelength is 300 nanometers. And it's very clear that B is smaller than the wavelength. But it's also clear that B is greater than half the wavelength. But unfortunately, we don't have any more information, so this is as precise as we can make to define B's length. How many units of reaction involve 200 oxygen atoms? 50. 100 or 200 oxygen atoms. So we know that one unit of reaction involves two oxygen atoms. So these two then rearrange to become over here. So if we have 100 of these reactions happening, we would have 200 oxygen atoms. So it's 100 units of reaction that yield 200 oxygen atoms. So the correct answer is 100 units of reaction. A fermium isotope weighs 2.49 times 10 to the negative 22 grams and has a negative two charge. What's the sum of all the subatomic particles? So the number of protons is 100 because that's the atomic number and it's what shows up in the element box. Likewise, if it has a negative two charge, it's got to have two more electrons than protons. So the sum of E plus P, this should say P not N, is 202, so we already know that A is not correct. Likewise, if we convert the mass from grams into AMU, we can figure out what the mass number is, and it's 150. So if 150 is P plus N, and E is 102, then the total number of subatomic particles, E plus N plus P, is 252.